Hello guys, today let's talk about Laravel Blade. And today I will have 9 random quick tips about Blade. Maybe some of you will know them, maybe some of you will learn one or two new things, and let's begin. First, for Rails loop. So pretty typical scenario in the Blade, if orders count, or if count of the records, then we do for each, else no orders found. In the Laravel Blade, there is a shorter way to do that, to avoid that if, you can do for else, Instead of for each, you do for else, like this, and end for else. And then inside of that, you should do, instead of else, there's empty. And then in that empty, you do no orders found. Something like this. A little bit shorter. Quick tip number two, I often see people doing something like this. So if checking the auth, but there's a shorter blade directive called add auth, and then else auth and auth, something like this. So you don't need to check if auth check. And also there's a counter command. So if there is a no access thing, for example, you can do the opposite. Guest, guest, else guest, and guest, like this. So that's the opposite way of doing the same thing. Quick tip number three, I often see people passing the username or user object from the session from the controller like this. So user auth user, passing that to the blade and then in the blade use that user. But auth user is accessible throughout all the blade files without really passing them. So logged in user can be accessed by our auth user, for example, name or email or whatever field you want from the user's table, or if you want user ID somewhere, it's even shorter with auth ID, something like this. So you don't need to pass anything from the controller to view the information or check the information of logged in user. Quick tip number four is formatting the dates in the blade, like created at and updated at. In every database table, in every eloquent model, created at and updated at are automatically carbon objects. So you don't need to format them in the controller somehow, you can do that directly in the blade like this one. So user created at, any table created at, you can do formatting, you can do any manipulation as carbon object. Something like to date string, for example, is also possible. And if you want other fields to perform the same way in your model, you need to specify them as dates. So dates is array of fields that are carbon objects by default. And then in the blade, you can manipulate them like this. Quick tip number five is route view command. Quite often I see people doing route get to some controller and inside of that controller, all that method does is returns the view. So there's a shorter way to do that. You can directly do route view from URL and bypass the controller. You don't need the controller. You directly specify the blade file pages.about like it would be here. So you don't need that method or even that controller anymore route view. Tip number six is easily customizing the blade error messages or error pages. You can publish all of them. By default, they are not public in Laravel vendor, but there is an artisan command to publish them easily in the documentation. So paste, we publish the files and they are accessible in resources views errors. So our 404 page is in resources views errors 404.blade. And you can customize them directly here now, like page not found. And if we reload that on existing page, it shows our customized error message. Or you can even choose which file it extends because there's error minimal, error layout or illustrated layout. So let's try to do illustrated layout like this. And we refresh and we have a different error page. So there are three designs available for you in the default Laravel. Quick tip number seven is clearing the cache of the view. I couldn't reproduce it locally, but sometimes after you make some changes, Laravel still loads the old view and you don't know why. It works in a way that every view is actually compiled in a folder called storage framework views. So these are PHP files, which are actually compiled in PHP language from blade to PHP. And sometimes it loads from the cache from that storage framework views instead of refreshing that. So to refresh that, to clear all the cache, there's artisan command PHP artisan view clear. Then it deletes all those files. Storage frameworks views is now empty and you can totally reload the page and be sure that it's compiled as a new page without cache. 
Tip number eight is about loading the assets like images or CSS file or JS file. There is a possibility that it won't load on other computer if that other computer doesn't have the same settings as yours, other server or different developer. So you need to make it flexible. Referencing images like this one without any path may lead to errors if someone is installing that project in a subfolder, for example, or with different domain, or they have some different configs in .env file, something like that. So one way of doing that is to have slash for all the local assets, and then they would load from the same domain and would reference public folder. But even that is not flexible because it wouldn't work on a subfolder. So if you install Laravel in subfolder, I wouldn't really recommend that, but sometimes people do that, that wouldn't work. So the best way to reference any asset is actually Laravel helper called asset. So if you do asset and then inside logo PNG, it actually transforms into full URL, taking that URL from your ENV file and from your config, and that should work everywhere. So the main point, the main tip when loading the asset, use asset helper. And finally, tip number nine is how to pass some global variables like page title. And it's worth a separate video on that topic because there are multiple ways, but I will show you the simple example. So you have a variable called page title and you may or may not pass that from the controller. So it should have a default value, something like home page if it's not provided. And then from the controller, you may provide that like page title, page title equals orders or something like that. And then pass that to the view as one of the variables. So if you don't pass that, it defaults to the home page. But if you do pass that, then it's taken from this variable. And let's take a look. We refresh the page, view the source, and we have title orders because we passed them. But if that variable doesn't exist, actually, let's common Z like it wouldn't even exist, still there would be no error, it would default to home page. Again, that's a simplified example of title or meta variables. It deserves a separate video just on that topic, but still a quick blade tip to default to another static text. I hope those tips were useful. If you want to support my daily mission of shooting daily videos here on YouTube, check out one of the three products that you can see on the screen, Quick Admin Panel Generator, Livewire Kit, or one of my 19 courses at the moment at teachable.com. See you guys in other videos.